All right, guys, uh, what we got here today is a Model 5, Square D Model 5 motor control center. This is a size 4, it's housed in a 30 inch frame. It does have an extra 3 inch blank compartment at the bottom, that's mainly for extra space for wiring and cabling and such. Uh, but overall, it's a standard unit, NEMA size 4, 200 amp switch. Uh, and really, the purpose of today's video is going to be just demonstrating getting this unit in and out. Uh, mainly surrounding around the mechanism that makes this um, vintage quite unique. It has a racking mechanism in the fact that you can actually disengage the fingers off the bus without taking the unit out and then reconnect them onto the bus. <clears throat> it has been something since that uh, Square D has discontinued in their later models, but at least in this vintage it was uh, available. Uh, for the 150 amp FA frame breaker types, uh, 100 amp fusible switch style, uh, they go on with one set of fingers each. They go on and off pretty easy. Uh, nothing really to, to, to complain about. On the larger size, the KA type breakers, the 200 amp fusible switches and so on, those go to a double finger setup, which then can make it a little bit more challenging getting that bus on and off. And I have a lot of customers, uh, clients and alike that will uh, regularly say something's wrong with the bucket, but they can't get it in or out. And really what happens is it's a little bit uh, odd, but you do have to sort of force this thing in and out. And I'll sort of demonstrate that now. So ultimately we're going to see the switch it does work on and off. So we're gonna release the quarter turns, one, two, and three. Using a flathead screwdriver, the door is open. Uh, you do have a quarter turn down here that you'll have to loosen. You can. You know, you could, I would probably leave that in until you get the, the actual switch off the bus. And then at that point, you know, it's probably better for this to be a little bit more rigid while you're going to go ahead and yank on this mechanism. <clears throat> so ultimately, <clears throat> this uh, racking mechanism that we're in discussion about, it has two interlocks. It has this top interlock here, behind here. That basically comes forward, and that's going to allow me to pull the switch back. After that's accomplished... There's then another interlock here that I have to press down to get the whole frame and bucket out. So it's sort of a two-step process. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Now, as I said, sometimes pulling on this mechanism can be pretty tough. As you can see, I'm pulling and it isn't coming. You really need both hands. Uh, and, and a little trick I have learned uh, was I take a, a tie wrap and I will actually fasten it right around these two mechanisms together keeping this clamp down so I can really grab this out here and get a good a good grip on it so I'll go ahead and set the camera back and redo that again apologize for the quality of the video I am doing uh, I am my cameraman today so we'll go ahead I'll put that tie wrap around said interlock I'm gonna go ahead and grip get that nice and tight pull it back secure the tie wrap okay and I really want to keep my hand out here and give it a good pull. So right now, you've probably seen, you can see the switch actually moving. This whole base rocks back, and those fingers are no longer connected to this bus bar in the cell. So now that that is free, and that's one other thing to note, this thing will rock a little bit. It needs to be all the way back. If this is not all the way back, when I go to push this mechanism down, it won't want to come. Halfway is a problem. I can't get it to go all the way back is good it releases okay that's one thing to notice so at this point i would go ahead and instruct you to release your quarter turn down here that's going to keep the frame in that'll shift it away there you go so right now uh we are off the bus we are removed on our interlock but what we still have going on is in, in the next compartment we have this piece of interlock holding on to the mid shelf if that does not drop lower, we can't get this unit out. That's going to drop lower by pressing on this particular yellow piece. And as you can see, again, if this is back, you see now it drops. What happens is sometimes this wants to sag forward a little bit, not staying back, and I can't get it. So it's a little difficult with one hand, but when I hold this back and push on that, this little piece will drop down and then the frame can come out. So I'll sit back up and we'll do that. Okay. So again, I'm gonna pull this back. I'm gonna hold this down. 
And now I'm free. Okay, so at this point, I can go ahead and slide this thing all the way out. I'll take that out, I'll store that on a clean table, and then I will get the couple of Phillips head screws that hold this door on in two or three places, take those off, and, uh, and if you need to put one back in, you would just go in the reverse uh, process. The only other thing that uh, we didn't really discuss was on this, they have uh, some pull-apart terminal blocks which will be housed down in the bottom section here. Uh, you'll have to disconnect those. Uh, one part of the harness will stay with the bucket, one part of the harness will stay with the cell. Um, so, you know, you'll have to disconnect those blocks there. But other than that, the unit's out, disengaged, and ready to be, uh, to be removed or replaced or whatever the case may be. So, um, and that's, that's it for today. Thank you.